El Minero, the miner. Man learned to use metals early in history. He made strong weapons and tools. Metal tools could do more than stone tools could. And metal tools could be used to make other tools. Metals could also be made into beautiful ornaments. Early men learned the value of metals quickly. At first men pick metals such as copper from a surface of the earth. When people wanted more and more things made of metals, then men began to dig or mine for metals. He could not find enough on the surface. Open the travel for miles searching for ores, which are minerals to contain metals. Long ago, explorer came to Spain looking for metals. They found such silver in Spain, so they stayed and taught the people how to look for metals and how to mine them in better ways. The Spaniards were soon making beautiful and useful things from their metals. The Mori Mine, one of the earliest in Arizona. Then the Spaniards came to the New York when they conquered Mexico. They found the Aztec Indians had large quantities of gold and silver, as well as their metals. The Spaniards set out to find more. They found much silver just north of Mexico City. They already knew how to mine and they mined large amounts by 1,600 Mexico produced more silver than any other country in the world. Miners were some of the first to move into the southeast. They followed the explorers and the missionaries. Most of the miners were mestizos. They were very able miners who had hoped to find very rich loads or deposits of ore. They never did, but they never stopped searching. So, in their search, they continued to mine much metal. To find precious metals, the miner used what he knew and had done many times before. Sometimes he could find gold just by looking at the earth. He found loose in the formations of the land, in changes in the color of soil, and even changes in plants. The miner's tools were simple at first. He carried a bitea or wooden bowl. He also had a hammer with which to grind the stones to powder and knife to pick out the gold nuggets. The simplest way of getting gold was fanning or removing the metal by washing quartz rock sometimes holds deposits of gold. Over many years, those stone called gravel and sand mix with gold wood was down from the quartz. The gravel, sand, and gold lay on the surface. The miner would put the lost gravel and sand into his bitea and was with it with water because the gold was heavier it would settle to the bottom when the miner found what he believed to be precious metal he became a sort of chemist his compire was his laboratory small pieces of ore were heated over the fire the heat brought out beads and metal. The miner could then tell what type of metal he had. Gold was yellow, copper was red, lead metal melted easily and could be cut with a knife. Silver was white and turned black when it was rolled in damp salt and exposed to the sand. When all the surface metals had been taken, the miner had to find other ways to get what he wanted. He searched for a bean, which is a portion of earth having a rich deposit of metals, and dug for ore. His main tool was a long iron bar, which weighed 
20 to 30 pounds. Many times the bean would go deep into the ground. If the bean was not too far down, a shop could be made. This was a hole dug straight down into the earth. The bean was very far down a tunnel called Bidhag. This was opening that when it the earth on its land, but the roof of a tunnel had to be propped up, and this was done with three trunks. This land, however, did not have many trees, and hence the men did not have much timber to serve to support the tunnel. So miners used the old Roman methods. They used stones to support the tunnel. This condition made mining quite dangerous. It was also very hard work. A miner was lowered into a small hole. He dug for many hours, peeling a large leather bag full of dirt. Then others would hold the bag to the surface. The Indians were good miners, but they had to work many hours. Sometimes they went down into the mines at sunrise and did not get home from work until after sunset. When the miners had removed the rocks, they had to separate the metal from the rock and dirt. The rocks were first crushed into powder. To do this men from Mexico used an invention brought to Spain by the Phoenicians. The Phoenicians were a people who lived in what is today Lebanon in the Middle East. In ancient times, they visited Spain to explore and trade. The invention they brought was called an arastra. It was a crude stone mill that ground down the rocks. Water was then used to wash away minerals in the ripple box. The box was slanted. The cross bits were fought into the box and washed down. The metal thus being coat and the grooves of the box. It was also very difficult to remove silver from dirt. Water was scarce in the southwest. The settlers had to be careful how they use it. In Mexico, miners used a clever method made nearly perfect by Bartolome Medina of Pachuca. Pachuca was a mining center and capital of Hidalgo State in central Mexico. This was called the Fatay process. Salt, blue stone, and mercury were ground into the crushed silver or the sun caused a change when the mixture was was almost pure silver was left behind the men from Mexico proved to be good miners. Members of Mexican colleges improved many of the mining methods. These methods were later used in the big bonanzas or brasses for precious metals of the American Southwest. They helped this region to grow. The question is, how did the Spaniards contact with other peoples improve their mining? And the other questions, how did their experiences in a, in a land like the Southeast help them? Hidden minings, many times the search for riches brought out the worst in people. The Indians of the Southeast were overworked and mistreated in the mines. Sometimes they became weak and ill. They were always fully fed. The Indians of a New Mexico finally revolted in 1680 and the settlers from Mexico left the mines. When the settlers returned, the mines were not be to be found. Many legions grew up about the rich mines that were lost. As the years pass, more and more were added to them. Everyone believed that the Indians still remembered when the hidden mines were. Some Indians enjoy teasing the settlers by promising that they might tell where the hidden mines were. Many times they found men who really believed that they could lead them to the buried treasure, but they never did. I hope you enjoyed this, my informations to every one of us don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel june abukar youtube channel 
much. Thank you very much. God bless and more power to everyone.